Asalaamu Alaikum. Right, let's just get Instagram started. Inshallah. Um, oh, it's not working here. Give me one second. Let's try that again. Oh, here we go. So you see all these other mums taking their children outdoors. You see it on Instagram, you see it on Facebook, but when you try it, it feels awkward, it feels weird, and you don't enjoy it. It's stressful and you wonder what you're doing wrong, what you're missing out on. So in today's live session, I wanna talk about how you can enjoy nature with your children, inshallah. Um, so for those of you who do not know me, my name is Dr. Gemma Elizabeth. I am the host of this podcast, Raising Mums. I have four children. Uh, we live in the northwest of the UK. I have a blog called Our Muslim Homeschool, and I'm the creator of the homeschooling course, Launch Your Homeschool. It's great to see so many of you popping on to Instagram already. Asalaamu Alaikum, everybody. So, before we get into today's episode about enjoying nature, I've got to introduce today's sponsor. So today's sponsor is Tutorful. So Tutorful is the trusted way to find a tutor for your children. Tuition that is accessible for everyone. So Tutorful offer tuition in over 300 subjects and have thousands of tutors in all the academic subjects, but they also have tutors, fantastic, highly qualified tutors, for more specialized subjects like coding, like art, like music, photography. Um, so if you're interested in finding a tutor, you need to check them out. A lot of you will be worried about reputation. Are they a reputable brand? They, if you look, on, look them up, Tutorful, they have been re rated as excellent by Trustpilot. They've got 4.8 out of five stars from over 2,600 parents. So they're big. There are over 200,000 parents and students who use them. They've taught over 1.5 million lessons. They are diligent about vetting their tutors as well before they're allowed to use the site. And they have over 11,000 private experienced tutors teaching. So what that basically means for you as a parent is that you, your children get access to the very best the most highly qualified tutors here in the UK. They offer a satisfaction guarantee as well, which means if you're not happy with your child's first lesson, they will give you another lesson with a different tutor for free, no questions asked. And what I think is really great is that one of their aims, one of their missions is to make the process of finding a tutor easy and affordable. So they've kept their prices um, at starting at 15 pounds per hour with no hidden fees. So the way it works that you go on their website, you browse through a list of their tutors and they will match you with certain tutors according to your needs. You will go through their profiles, find out about their qualifications, find out more about their teaching styles. And then when you think you found the perfect tutor for your child, um, then you can message that tutor and you can actually arrange a free complimentary call with them to discuss your child's needs and find out if you're the right fit. Um, lessons take place on the Tutorful website itself. They have an interactive classroom where you speak and you see and you speak to your tutor um, live through the webcam. They have an intuitive web, um, an intuitive whiteboard, excuse me, where your tutor and your child can share and edit documents. So it's really professionally done. So if you're interested in finding the perfect tutor for your child, um, then check out their website. I've put a link for you guys on Facebook with this video, Instagram, the link is in my profile. If you're looking for a tutor for your children, check them out, the link is in the profile Instagram. Um, right, let's get into today's session. So how to enjoy nature with children. 
Now, there's this understanding amongst everybody, whether you're an outdoorsy person or not, there's an understanding that being outside is good for you. That, you know, everybody appreciates that being outside is healing, it's nourishing in some way, even if we can't explain why. And, you know, scientific discoveries come a long way and we have found out that there's a lot of benefits. Uh, whether it's the benefits of being in the sunlight, whether it's the microbes in the soil that affect your mood, even the colors itself, the color of nature affects the mood of you and your children. But, you know, even though there is this real tangible benefit to mind and body with being outdoors, as Muslims, we know that there's something more. We know that there's something deeper, something beyond that. It's not just about looking at nature, it's about looking beyond it. So Albert Einstein said, look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. When you're outdoors with your children, you're away from distractions, you're away from the dunya. You know, when you're at home, you've got so many things to do, you've got your phone, you've got the TV, it's very easy to become distracted, to lose yourself in the mundane and to forget really the purpose of why you're here. But when you're outside and you're surrounded by the wonder of creation, you're immersed in it, you cannot forget your purpose. You cannot forget your creator. Everything, if you allow it to, is a reminder. And your children can feel it too. Their souls can feel it, even if they can't articulate it. And that really is the ultimate purpose of nature of everything really, is remembrance. It's dhikr. I think, you know, when you see on Instagram, when you see on Facebook, nature study and people learning about nature and drawing pictures about nature, it can be very um, easy to assume that that's where it ends. But we're not, what, what that would be is just admiring the signpost, looking at that signpost and saying, what a beautiful signpost it is. Let's paint pictures of it. Let's talk about it. Let's learn about it. But that's not, we're not just admiring how beautiful the signpost is. We, are, we need to consider where is that signpost pointing us to? Who is that signpost pointing us to? And that is what nature study is all about. But I know that many of you have tried to get out into nature, to teach your children more about it yourself. You want to learn more, but it doesn't feel that way to you. It doesn't feel like dhikr. It doesn't feel like immersing yourself in the remembrance of Allah, actually, when you take your kids to the park, it can be very stressful. It can be, you can be feeling on edge because your kids run off or they get really dirty or you just feel really out of place. So firstly, you are not alone there. We're not all outdoorsy people, myself included. You know, I am not somebody who hikes up mountains I don't swim in ravines, I don't go rock climbing, I don't go camping. But that doesn't mean that you, to enjoy nature, you have to be that way. There's a whole spectrum and you can do what you feel comfortable with. First of all, I wanna make that clear. Um, You don't need to be an adventurer to do all of these things. So, and what you will find is that the more you expose yourself and you try new things, you will find out where you fit in that spectrum. But I'm gonna give you some tips now to make that experience of being out in nature with your children more enjoyable and to give you more confidence. So the first worry that you might have when you're outdoors with your kids is that you feel out of place. You feel like you're lacking, lacking in confidence. You just feel weird and you don't know what you're supposed to do with yourself. First of all, I would really encourage you to start small. Start with going outdoors to a place that feels comfortable to you right now and slowly build up confidence. So if you're in a city, that might mean just going to the park, go into your local park, and then perhaps the next month after that, you try going to a National Trust property or somewhere a little bit more out of your comfort zone and slowly build yourself up. Maybe go to the beach in six months time. You don't have to throw yourself into the deep end right away. Do what feels right now and slowly build up confidence. Um, I'd encourage you as well just to think about, make a list and ask your children as well. You know, where are the places locally to you that you really want to visit? That perhaps because of confidence, because of something inside of you was reluctant to do it, where would you like to visit? What outdoor places would you and your children like to go and get them involved as well? 
And I would, and I would like to say, especially with older kids, sometimes it's not just you who's nervous about being outside. Sometimes your children are nervous as well. Sometimes your children just don't enjoy it. And that is typically just because they're not used to it. And it will take time for them to get used to it. So just like going to places gradually and building up your adventures, build up the time. Just start with 30 minutes of a walk to your local park and slowly increase that. Maybe you want to spend an hour or two outdoors on the weekend instead of half an hour. Slowly build up the time because that's more sustainable for you and it will gradually increase your children's tolerance for it as well. And as you increase that, they'll start to see the pleasure in being outdoors as well. Right, the second thing that I know a lot of you are concerned about is you don't know enough. Like, how can you teach your children about nature when you don't know anything? Can I tell you something? Can I confide something in you? Don't tell anyone, okay? When I, when I first started homeschooling, when I first, when maybe when my kids were, my eldest was about three and I really started to take it seriously, I knew nothing about nature. I knew a blackbird and a robin, and that was about, that was about it. <laughs> I didn't know anything, but you don't need to, okay? When you're outside, the point is not to teach your children. This is what this is called. This is what this is called. That's not what you're there to do. When you're with your kids outdoors, you want to follow their lead. Let your children lead the discussion, lead the exploration, lead that discovery. And you just follow along. Um, you follow their curiosity. You're not there to lecture them. So when they, if they're interested in something, if they find um, if they find a tree and they say, wow, mama, look at this tree, it's so big. Your job is not to go, oh, well, did you know that the name of this tree is this and it comes from the Latin of this? No, your job is to go, oh, you're right, look how big it is, whoa. And then when you get home, you look on Google, you look on YouTube, you find out a little bit more about it, together, together. Maybe if you've got a book at home or you go to the library, your job is just to be their backup. You're not there to give them all the information. You're just there to encourage them um, and allow them to express their curiosity and enthusiasm. And as you do this with your children, your own bank of knowledge will grow. You will start to learn more, just like I did. Um, and as your knowledge grows, as your children's knowledge grows, your confidence will grow too. Um, and your enthusiasm for being outdoors in nature will as well. I know a big thing that really stresses mums out and dads is the mess, okay? Especially here in the UK, it's very wet most of the year, it's very muddy most of the year, and kids get very dirty. Although I expect kids get dirty, whatever the climate, wherever you live. Um, but that can be a real stressful experience for a lot of mums. The only way to get around that is to just be prepared for the mess. Children, if you let them play, will get messy. I'm often absolutely in shock at my boys when they play football. To me, playing football means, you know, you, you kick the ball with your foot. That's what I thought it means. No, apparently playing football means rolling in the grass and skidding across on your new jeans and just it's, it's not what you expect it to be. Play, when children play, is full on. And when it's full on, it's when they enjoy it the most. So when you take your kids out, be prepared for the mess. And if you're prepared for the mess, you'll be less stressed and you'll enjoy the experience. Do not get your kids dressed up to go to the park. Do you know who gets their kids dressed up to go to the park? the people who never go to the park or they only go that one time and then they never go back again. If you put your kids in their best trainers and their smartest jeans and you take the most expensive football they have to the park, you are gonna be constantly on edge and you're not gonna allow them to play as fully as they want to play. So what that means is have specific clothes for your kids to go out in nature in. That doesn't mean they have to be like, scruffy or anything, but they just have specific clothes that they wear and that can get muddy and dirty or get sand on, whatever it is. And it's not the end of the world if they get dirty. Um, for us, where we live, we have, the kids have shoes 
that are specifically, we call them dirty shoes. They're the shoes that they wear to the woods or the park or whatever. And if they get muddy, if they get dirty, I can just chuck them in the washing machine and it's fine. And um, they also have waterproof trousers, which are an absolute godsend. If you live here in the UK, I really recommend you get some waterproof trousers for your kids. Even if it's just the fact that they can go on the slide when it's wet and you know their trousers won't get wet. That's a really big deal. So be prepared for the mess. Not just your kids though, you too. Wear clothes that will keep you warm because there's nothing like feeling cold to make you want to encourage your kids to get back in the car and go home. So wear a, a real coat, not just a coat that looks cool and looks nice. Wear something that will keep you warm and that you don't mind if it gets a bit of mud on it. Um, also, if you drive, you'll want to you'll want to prepare your car for the experience because if your kids are dirty when they get in the car, they're going to bring the dirt with them. So the way that we have worked this out is I have a plastic tablecloth. You know one of those vinyl tablecloths? I have that in the boot of my car. I have a lot of carrier bags. And when we leave to go to the park, the kids are all clean and they have clean shoes on. When we get to the park, they change shoes and they put their waterproof trousers on. Then when they're all dirty, we get back to the car, the dirty stuff comes off into carrier bags, into the boot. They put their clean shoes on and they get back in the car. Now it's not foolproof. The car will still get a little bit dirty, but it really minimizes it. And knowing that your car is gonna be okay, your car is gonna be um, not a, a wrecked by the whole experience, means that you're not put off by going out to the park, by going to the woods or to the beach or wherever it may be. So be prepared for the mess and be prepared for, um, and prepare your car for the mess as well. I'm just gonna have a little scroll through here while I have a drink. Miral says she knew a sparrow and a crow. Oh, that is more than me, Miral. <laughs> uh, what else have we got going on here? Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sumeya, Zainab. Okay. Okay. Uh, Amina, Assalamu alaikum. Right. So, another thing that can stop you from going out into nature is grumpy kids. Your kids just end up whinging and whining, and you just, at the end of the day, you're thinking, why did I even bother? What is the point of this? So, you need to be prepared for what you can do to prevent it, basically. So your kids are gonna get grumpy if their needs are not being met. So first of all, their physical needs. You wanna make sure that when you go out, they're not hungry and tired, particularly for younger kids, obviously. And then take with you things to sustain them. Take snacks and water. Be careful with the water, because of course it is heavy, and if you're gonna be carrying that around, it's gonna wear you out. So a little bit of water, some snacks. If you have little ones, you'll need nappies, wipes, spare clothes. Now, some of this can be left back in the car if you drove. If you don't drive, that's fine, but just be aware of the weight of what you're taking with you, how heavy it is. Take some plasters. If a kid gets hurt, it's amazing how quickly they'll stop crying if you just put a plaster on it. It works. So keep a couple of plasters in your pocket. Um, and if you're nursing, have a cover to put over yourself so that you feel comfortable wherever you are nursing your baby and you don't have to rush home every time your baby needs to feed. But obviously, if you are in a situation where you wouldn't feel comfortable um, with nursing, that's something, uh, with nursing in public, that's something to consider before you leave, um, to, to go to places where you would feel comfortable with that. When you're out, if your kids are complaining, it's either physically their needs are not being met or emotionally. And usually if your emotional needs of your children are not being met, it's because you are distracted. And the main reason for being distracted is our phones. Usually that's what it is. You're too busy on your phone to be giving yourself emotionally to your child. Something that I've seen and witnessed in my own life is when I go out on these nature walks with my kids, that is the time when they open up. That's the time when they tell me things that they never told me at home. I used to think it was the change of scene, you know, getting out of the house, and maybe that's part of it. But actually what I think is a bigger role in that, or a bigger part to play in that, is the fact that I'm not distracted. That I am, although I have my phone, I take a few photos, but then it goes away. 
I am fully present with them. I'm not trying to get the dishes done. I'm not trying to, you know, do 101 things on my list and go on Instagram and do all the things. I am just present with them in that moment. And that allows them to open up emotionally. They talk to me about things that they never talked to me about before. And I think that connection is so important, especially in older kids. The older they get, the more we want to make sure that there's still that connection, that there's still that option, that, that possibility for them to chat with you about things that are troubling them. So if your children are feeling that emotional disconnect with you, um, going out into nature and putting your phone away can be a wonderful way to reconnect. Um, and of course, if you're out and about in nature, but you're still looking at your phone, you're missing the whole point. You're missing that immerse, immersion in, in the wonder of God, in Allah, in the dhikr that is so possible. The final thing that I want to talk about that people feel understandably when they go out, they're not used to being out in nature, going on nature walks, doing all of that stuff. They think, okay, so my kids are, are okay. They're climbing up a tree. They're playing football. They're doing their thing. So what do I do? Like, you feel a bit of a lemon. <laughs> what do you do? Just stand there and watch them? Personally, I do just stand there and watch them. And I find that when I'm outside of the house and I'm not distracted, watching my kids in that moment playing is the time that I'm most grateful for them. I'm most grateful for, for everything, alhamdulillah. I think that, you know, when it comes to that moment, you know, when you're feeling awkward and weird and like you don't know what to do with yourself, you're just thinking about you. You're just allowing your nafs to get the best of you. If you remember why you're there, you can overcome all of that. So like me coming on here right now, there was a big part of me that did not want to come and do this live session because I was telling myself, I don't know what to say. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make a fool of myself. I'm gonna say the wrong thing. People are gonna laugh at me, blah, 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 blah. All of the things, okay? And then I said, no. You know, you have to go on here. You have to say something. You have to help people. It's not about you, Gemma. It's about them. And so when you're in that situation in nature, in the park, and you feel like a lemon because you don't know what to do with yourself, remember why you're there. It's not about you, it's about them. And it's also about remembering Allah. So change your intention. The reason that you're there is to feel connected to nature and to feel connected to the creator. And then when you, when you reconnect with that intention, all that nonsense that's going on in your head will, it'll go, it'll go in an instant. And the more you do it, the more you get out into nature, I assure you, the more confidence you'll get. The more you'll start to feel more at home in that environment, you'll start to learn more. And it's so enriching to your lives and to your children's lives. You'll start to feel more daring and go on more fun adventures and, and create deeper bonds with your children and beautiful, beautiful memories. Now, if you're in a situation, as I know some of you are, where you can't get out and about that much. Maybe you live in the inner city um, and, and you don't drive, so getting out is difficult. Maybe you have a newborn child, maybe you're unwell, and for some reason that means you, you're prevented from getting out of the house much. If that's the situation you're in right now, then bring nature to you. Bring nature indoors to you. So that might mean growing seeds inside. Just the other day we were growing um, peas. We put peas into a jar and stuffed it with damp kitchen roll so that we can watch those seeds, those peas germinate in the house. Um, we got some old twigs and we made wreaths from them. Um, beeswax candles, you can get kits on Amazon um, to make beeswax candles in your home. Watch documentaries. I mean, that's a great way to learn more about nature and just spark that interest in nature. And if you're able to, you know, look out of your window and you can spot birds and things outside. So bring nature into your home if you can't get out to it. Okay, so I'm gonna just take a few questions before we wrap up. Um, so if you have a question, guys on Facebook and on Instagram, please feel free to leave it now and I will, um, I'll answer what I can, inshallah. There's a little bit of a lag, so I'll just give you a few minutes. Uh, bismillah. Walaikum salam, Yasmin. 
Shamsa Mustaq. Oh yeah, Alhamdulillah. Jessica, Asalaamu Alaikum. Oh, I appreciate that, Jessica. Thank you for coming on. Okay, let's have a look. Gardening does help. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Okay, we've got a lot of comments coming on on Instagram. So let's have a little look what's going on here. Um, okay. Asalaamu Alaikum, Fatima. How are you? It's so nice to see you on here. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yes, inshallah, it will be recorded. The session will be recorded. It'll be on IGTV. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on the, po it's on everywhere. Podcast, uh, Facebook. It'll be on my website. Inshallah, it's going to be recorded and you can get it somewhere. Um, so true about the plasters. Oh, Asalaamu Alaikum, Nadia. How are you? Okay. Um, okay, I can't see any questions. Just lots of gratitude and inspiring comments. So I really appreciate you sharing all of your experiences outside. Uh, it's beautiful. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave you with leave you with a little quote that I think really sums up what this is all about. Um, this is by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And he said, nature is too thin a screen. The glory of the omnipresent God bursts through everywhere. And I think that so many of you here on Instagram have said just the same thing, that the omnipresent God bursts through everywhere. And once you get past those emotions of feeling awkward, feeling scared, feeling nervous, you can't help to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everywhere. And it's a beautiful experience to offer your children and, and to give them on a regular basis if you can, inshallah. Okay, so don't forget, if you are looking for a tutor for your children to check out Tutorful, the links in my profile, the links with this video. Um, and I will see you next Sunday, same time, inshallah, for another episode of Raising Mums. Have a great week, guys. Assalamu alaikum.